Okay guys, uh, I'm going to go through this Prezi presentation with you about uh, the kingdoms Archaeobacteria and Eubacteria. Don't forget to have your uh, graphic organizer ready. This one's going to be for the first two columns of your graphic organizer. Alright, so as long as this will let us start it, we'll begin. Obviously there's a little issue with it being too close. There we go. Okay, so this is about kingdoms Archaeobacteria and Eubacteria. Okay, so first off, characteristics wise, both of these kingdoms are prokaryotic organisms. Now that means that they lack a nucleus and they don't have membrane bound organelles. That's what prokaryotes are. We talked about them when we talked about uh, bacterial diseases earlier this year. Now, bacteria and archaea are both unicellular organisms. That means that they are a colony of one. They uh, are all their each own independent entity and they do not form groups or tissues or anything like that. Okay, now archaeobacteria have cell walls with no peptidoglycans. Now eubacteria, their cell walls do have peptidoglycans. Now that doesn't make a lot of sense to you guys because you don't remember what a peptidoglycan is. It's just a type of glycoprotein and uh, it's just a biochemical difference between these two. They say that uh, archaeobacteria, at least by popular theory, are the older of the two, evolutionarily speaking, and that that peptidoglycan uh, complex had not formed when this uh, cell structure first evolved. So it's just one of the ways that they took this from one group and split it into two. But for your purposes, this is about the only big difference that you'll see. Now a uh, couple more characteristics. First off, uh, the way they get nutrition. Both archaeobacteria and eubacteria, they can be autotrophs or heterotrophs. It just depends on which species it is. They're all microorganisms, they're all single-celled, but some of them can make their own food and some of them do have to rely on eating others for food. And don't forget that is the difference between an autotroph and a heterotroph. I had a lot of you asking that lately. Autotrophs make their own food. Through photosynthesis is the most popular way. Uh, chemosynthesis is possible, but we haven't talked about that as much. But anyway, photosynthesis. Remember, plants, they're green. Those are autotrophs. Heterotrophs, they have to eat something else. Grass or other organisms. Something. They can eat plants. They can eat animals. But if they eat something, they're a heterotroph. Okay, locomotion. Archaeobacteria and eubacteria both move using pili or flagella. And the picture that you see right here is a typical bacteria and you see the flagellum, it's pointed out over on the side, and the pili, they're just littler versions. Alright, a couple examples of archaeobacteria are methanogens and halophiles. Now, they are extremophiles. It means they can live in very extreme environments, like halophiles very much enjoy very hot, hot conditions. Now, you, uh, bacteria examples are some of these ones that we've heard of that cause disease. Streptococcus, if you've had strep throat, you've had streptococcus. It's over here, it's the purple one. It's purple because it is uh, from a gram stain and it just shows a difference in the cell wall. Now, E. coli over here on the right, that's one, it's actually just about everywhere, but certain strains of E. coli can make you very, very sick. Now, hopefully this got your uh, graphic organizer nice and filled out even if you have to go back and listen to it again. If not, you can go to the link that I have down here to find some more information. This Prezi presentation without the voiceover is also available on my website. So you can go on there and click any of the things you want to or uh, anything else that you need to.